What's up guys, today we'll be going over the best weapon loadout in Shadowkeep, something that's going to be really good in every single encounter, every single activity, no matter what you're doing, this loadout will be the go-to best loadout pretty much across the board. And that will be Iznagi's Burden with Catalyst, then Recluse, then also Wendigo GL3. And in this video, we'll be breaking down every single part of this weapon loadout, all the DPS numbers, all the things like that, also how to get all these weapons for new players and things like that. I definitely want to be mindful of new players in some of these videos because this build will be very good for a very long time so as new players start playing destiny with new light and things like that they're gonna be curious of how to get these weapons so let's go ahead and start with that first first to get iznagi's burden it's a long quest line that started in the black armory that you have to go through all the different forges and things like that so i'm just gonna go ahead and link a video because it's actually a long quest line it's exotic quest but once you actually get Iznagi's Burden to get the Catalyst, you have to do a Heroic Menagerie with a fully upgraded Chalice, and you should get it first completion once you have all those things done. Now moving on to the Recluse, which was a Crucible Pinnacle weapon multiple seasons ago. And to get this one, you go up to Lord Shax, and he will have a quest that rewards the Recluse in here somewhere. Obviously, I've already taken it. But for this one, all you will have to do is reach 2100 Fabled in the competitive playlist, which this season is Survival or Freelance Survival, which is the Solo Queue playlist. And once you're done with that step, the other step is getting a bunch of completions of games across the board in Crucible. Any playlist counts, so wherever you like to play, go ahead and do that. Then finally, in our power slot, the Wendigo GL3, which is a grenade launcher, was a Vanguard Pinnacle weapon. So if you go up to Zavala, he will have the quest somewhere in here for you. And this one is just getting a bunch of grenade launcher kills, grenade launcher multi-kills, and things like that in strikes. So there's a bunch of tricks you can do. You can load up a strike and go into a lost sector or even go into the corrupted and go into the blind well and farm there. Then using fighting line is really good for that quest line. So overall, this build is absolutely insane. It's going to be the best build probably of all Shadowkeep and future DLCs outside of a huge nerf to one of these weapons. You have Recluse for insanely good red bar clear. You have Wendigo for really good group clear and single target damage. Then you have Iznagi's Burden, which is one of the best damage weapons in the game and also has really, really good sustained damage. So you have a little bit of everything for every single situation and a lot of the utility of these weapons kind of overlap so it's not just like this is for red bar clear this is for major clear and this is for bosses a lot of the different names overlap and kind of do two of the three jobs at once so it really flows really well this build really has no weaknesses or downsides so first breaking down Izanagi's burden with honed edge Holding Reload consumes the magazine and loads around with additional range and damage then the other perk of Izanagi's burden is outlaw and it's a 90 rpm sniper rifle Looking at the damage on Greg without Honed Edge, it hits 19,486. Then with Honed Edge times 4 by reloading, also with the mass work, which increases the damage of Honed Edge, it now hits 86,284, which means Honed Edge with Catalyst is 4.43 times damage that of a normal shot. Now if we go ahead and look at the DPS of Izanagi's Burden, taking advantage of max reload, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. My favorite is Ophidian Aspect with Rifle Loader on Warlock. You can also use things like Pulse Wave or Bottom Tree Tether. There's all kinds of ways to get to max reload in this game. So go ahead and testing the rate of fire shooting off 6 shots of Honed Edge times 4 and seeing how long that takes with max reload. It's going to take quite a while. It takes roughly 10.85 seconds, which means the DPS of Izanagi's Burden with Master Work is 47,715, which is insanely good for a special weapon. And the total damage output of Izanagi's Burden over those 6 shots is 517,704, which is absurd for a special weapon. The next part of this build will be the Recluse with the main perk Master of Arms, kills with any weapon improve the damage of this weapon. Then it also has Feeding Frenzy, which will help with Reload greatly. So first looking at what Master of Arms does, it hits 325 on head, then 197 without the perk. Now with the perk, it hits 393 on the head and 390 on the body, which means it's a 21% increase of the headshot damage, then a 98% increase of the body. So the body and headshot numbers with Master of Arms are nearly the exact same. And this is toned down from before Shadow Keep, where body shot was 150% damage, but it's still extremely strong, pretty much feels pretty much the same. By far the best ad clearing weapon in Destiny's history, especially outside of exotics it's insanely good like there really isn't much to say about this weapon it is the best period in the story and it's not even exotic the final piece of this build will be the wendigo gl3 which is a grenade launcher with explosive light picking up an orb of light increases the next grenade's blast radius and damage then its other perk is auto loading holster which will help with the uptime of this weapon and not having to reload it so looking at the damage without explosive light it hits roughly 18,000 on greg 
Now with explosive light, it's something like 30,000, which is a 71% increase with explosive light. And not only does explosive light increase the damage, it also increases the blast radius of each grenade. Then if you pair that with something like blinding grenades, which is on this grenade launcher, with that increased radius, it will kill a lot of things with one shot, and the things that don't die will then be blinded and not be able to hit you, so it works really well. Now testing the rate of fire shooting off a mag, that took 2.6 seconds. So the DPS of one magazine of Windigo is 70,502, which is the best burst damage in the game. And looking at the total reserves of this weapon, it's 17 with no reserve perks, which means the total damage output of this weapon with only six explosive light is 380,000. Then with all explosive light, if you want to shoot six at a time, would be 520,000. And overall, the best way to use Windigo in this build is to fully take advantage of auto-loading holster. Whenever you need to shoot Windigo, you just shoot it. Then you don't reload it. You pull out Uznagi's Burden or whatever you're doing next, add clear, whatever it is. Then once you need when to go again, it's going to be loaded for you. So it's this really good flow to this build where for ad clear or single target damage, you know, you can just use whatever, pull out when to go when you need it and never have to really worry about reloading it. So this weapon build is easily the best in Shadowkeep. I haven't played a single activity or encounter where this wasn't the best loadout. You pretty much have the best weapon in every slot possible. Izanagi's Burden is by far the best special weapon in the game for PvE. Recluse is the best primary in the game, period, in a story. Then Wendigo GL3 is one of the best power weapons in the game, especially if you don't include exotics. So you literally have the best in every single position in this build. Also, like I said at the beginning of the video, kind of categorize the different aspects of the game into three different categories, like red bar clear, major clear, and single target damage. Almost all these weapons are good at two of the three. For example, Recluse is really good at red bar clear. Then it's also really good at major clear. Then Wendigo GL3 is really good for group red bar clear, really good for major clear, group major clear, all those things. Then it also is really good for that burst damage on a single target. Then Izanagi's Burden is really good for that single target DPS and also that sustained single target damage. Then it's also pretty good at major clear if you need to use it on majors if you don't have Wendigo ammo. So overall just the way this build flows between the different weapons, it just seems really smooth and really really good. This build works amazing in the new raid in every single encounter you pretty much never have to swap it off. And another thing that helps this build out a lot is if you pair this with one player on your team using Divinity, that makes Izanagi's a lot easier to use. You don't really have to aim as intensely. So it kind of takes out that risk of missing a shot. Then also Wendigo pairs really well with Divinity also by making every single grenade crit. So not only is this build really, really good as is, it also pairs really well with the new Divinity, which is kind of like the meta for team damage. So there's really no weakness at all to this build at all. There's not a single encounter in any activity in the game where this will not get the job done. You have a crit weapon if it's a crit boss. For example, Last Wish, pretty much all the bosses there are crit bosses. Then also the new raid, Garden of Salvation, all the bosses are also crit based bosses there. But then if you're finding something without a great crit spot, you have Wendigo. There really is no weakness or downside to this build at all. On top of that, I think Wendigo GL3 is the most underrated weapon in Destiny's history. And people actually think it's good and I still think it's underrated. And the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people think it's good for that single target damage and things like that. But the thing that separates this from the pack is that increased blast radius with blinding grenades. Being able to blind pretty much everything in the game is so powerful and so underrated. If you're in any sticky situation, just shooting one shot will blind everything and you have like 5 or 6 seconds of downtime where nothing can even look around and shoot you. That is such an underrated aspect of this weapon and this build. So if you're a long time viewer of mine or just pretty much played Destiny a little bit more hardcore, you're probably not very surprised that this was the best build for Shadowkeep. I pretty much predicted it before Shadowkeep even went live. So this shouldn't be really that much of a surprise to most people. I think we kind of all expected this to be the best build once we heard Recluse wasn't getting really touched that much at all. And for all the new light players or just new players to Shadowkeep that are returning after not playing for like a year or whatever, if you're a PV player going to get this build right now, it's gonna be the best build probably for the next year maybe even longer and yeah if you guys have any questions make sure to comment below i'll try to get to as many as i can anyways i think i said all i want to say about this build it's absolutely insane the rest of the video will just be a little bit of gameplay with this build just kind of showing off when to use the different parts of the build anyways thanks for watching catch you guys next time